Today, in continuation of our virology classes, today we are going to explain the origin of viruses and evolutionary relationship. We are going to relate the origin of viruses with RNA world, the first universal common ancestors, and the last universal common ancestor. Most importantly, we are going to start with the theory, with the hypothesis that explains the origin of viruses. We we'll start with progressive or escape hypothesis, then regressive or reductive hypothesis, and the virus first hypothesis. We will then relate them with the RNA world, the FUCA, and the LUCA. The progressive or escape hypothesis state that viruses arose from genetic elements that gain the ability to move between cells. The genetic material capable of transparent from one cell to another true horizontal gene transfer, if you can recall transduction, uh, conjugation and transformation under our bacteriology, they can get the ability to exist on their own, hence become viruses. Therefore, this is entailing that cells existed before viruses, but some selected bacterial cells or complex cells, they've already gained the ability to transfer their genetic material, if you can recall plasmid. Plasmid, they have chain of DNA that can encode their transfer, and hence this hypothesis is hypothesizing that these plasmid they can also gain the ability to exist on their own. Therefore, they can form viruses. The reductive or regressive hypothesis state that those category of bacteria which they are already obligate intracellular bacteria like climate, they can be reduced or degenerated to form viruses. Because initially, the obligate intracellular property is a property of viruses. By this hypothesis, it means this category of bacteria is degenerated to form viruses. As well, that's where there is a relationship between uh, the progressive and uh, reg regressive hypothesis. Because the progressive and regressive regressive hypothesis they all indicate that cells predate or pre-existed before viruses that means we get viruses from those cells those bacteria cells the first viral hypothesis stated that viruses predate or co-evolved meaning viruses were formed before cells or they existed together with their current cellular host the progressive and the regressive hypothesis both assume that cells existed before the virus. But this theory hypothesized that viruses come before we evolve together with the cells. This is where the idea of the RNA world, the first universal common ancestors and the last universal ancestors is born. And that's why we have to relate this hypothesis with them and the other aggressive and progressive hypothesis. Initially, using the theory of Darwinism, Darwin believed that there was a big bang where there is reaction between some certain element and eventually there is a evolvement of uh, celestial bodies. And after some certain billion years, there is RNA world. Since RNA forces the mechanism to produce DNA and eventually cell, we assume that the first component of life that the RNA world produce is the RNA virus, then the DNA virus. That means viruses predate, comes before even the first universal common ancestors and the last universal common ancestors. That's why you can see from the diagram that these viruses, they come first before the cells. The RNA world is a hypothetical stage in the evolutionary history of life on Earth in which self-replicating DNA molecules proliferate before the evolution of DNA and protein. That means this RNA world theory is related with the viral first hypothesis because it is also indicating that these viruses immediately after the formation of the RNA world, the first thing that comes into existence is the RNA, DNA viruses, then protein. Then this led to the formation of the first universal common ancestors. Then as time progressed around 3 billion years back, then there is formation of the last universal common ancestors. 
then eventually there is formation of the ancestral cell which through horizontal gene transfer lead to the formation of the last universal common ancestor then the last universal common ancestor evolved into the archaea bacteria the eukarya bacteria and the uh, real bacteria which are the uh, prokaryotes The first universal ancestor can be related to the dogma, uh, central dogma for molecular biology. The activity of the RNA world resulted to the uh, formation of polymers or sequence of DNA, which the RNA polymerase uh, enzyme used those sequence of DNA to produce protein. And eventually this protein led to the formation of the first universal ancestor. The first universal ancestor is, a, is, is, uh, is also linear to the last universal ancestor using the central dogma of molecular biology. As well, that's why the FUCA is related to the uh, viral first hypothesis. 200 billion years between the formation of the FUCA, then it descends down to the last universal common ancestor where almost all the microorganisms are life itself as a hypothesized by Charles Darwin comes to being. The last universal ancestor is linear to first universal ancestor and the first universal ancestor comes from the RNA world and the RNA world comes from the Big Bang based on the, the Darwin's theory of evolution. Now from the last universal ancestor we have the archaea bacteria, the old bacteria, which most often they are extreme organism. They dwell in almost all the places that is extreme, the volcanic, and and uh, most of them they have uh, distinct properties different from uh, typical viruses. Then we have the eukarya, the complex uh, cells, and we have the bacteria. The theory of evolution descend down from the big bang to the rna world to the first universal common ancestor the last universal common ancestor then the formation of the asian cells then the uh, eukarya the archaea and bacteria at the end of this class i want you to answer this assignment as a review questions make sure that you answer them inside your book first of all i want you to explain all the uh, hypothesis